So in this video today, we are going to look at how to prepare a dry sample of a salt. A salt's made by the neutralization of an acid with a base. And the base we're going to use today is copper oxide, the acid, sulfuric acid. So we will be making copper sulfate. So the first thing we need to do is take a measured amount of our sulfuric acid. And you'll notice I'm wearing goggles because I don't want to get the acid in my eye. Uh, this is quite strong, so I have to be quite careful. So just using a measuring cylinder, I'm carefully going to measure out 40 centimetres cubed of my sulfuric acid. Ooh, getting that. Makes a good noise. And I'm going to pour that into a beaker. Now, to make the reaction go a little bit faster, I'm going to give that a bit of a gentle heat. So using my tripod and gauze, I'm going to open up my Bunsen burner about halfway on the air hole and pop this on just for 30 seconds or so. Now, my copper oxide is a solid base and it's important here just to realise that it's not just alkalis that neutralise acids. A base is any material that will neutralise an acid and form a salt, so they're not all alkalis, and they can be metal oxides or metal carbonates or metal hydroxides, which we commonly know as, know as alkalis. So that should just be warmed a little bit now. So I'm going to take that off. It's not too hot that I can't handle it. And I'm going to now add my copper oxide. I'm going to add an excess of copper oxide, which means I'm going to add more than I need to neutralise all of the acid. But how will I know when I've added an excess? Well, I'll show you. I'll add a little bit of it to start with and give it a stir with my glass rod. And straight away, we should be getting a chemical reaction. And if I leave that to settle, we should see that the liquid is starting to turn blue. So all of that copper oxide that I added to my sulfuric acid has now all reacted and it looks like it's dissolved, but in fact it's reacted and it's formed the soluble salt copper sulfate. So I haven't added an excess. I haven't added more than I need. And I need to make sure I do that so that all of my acid is neutralized. So I'm going to add just another spatula to make sure that all of the acid has reacted. I'm going to give it another little stir just to make sure that I've made as much copper sulphate as I can. So now I, I'm sure that I've added an excess because I can see I've got black unreacted copper oxide in my beaker. I need to remove that from the copper sulphate so that my crystals are pure. So I'm going to need to use filtering for that because the copper oxide is insoluble. And so I'm just going to take my filter paper, fold it once and then twice into quarters and then open it up so I've got three thicknesses of paper on one side and one on the other to make a little cone which I can pop into my funnel. And then I'm going to pour the contents of my beaker into my paper and we should quickly see the lovely pure blue copper sulfate solution pouring through. There's all my unreacted copper oxide, which I don't need to put into the filter paper. And we just need to wait for that to filter through now. So we filtered all the copper oxide out of our mixture and we can now see we've got our lovely bright blue copper sulfate solution. But the idea of this practical is to get pure dry crystals and they're certainly not dry at the moment. So we're going to evaporate the water out by pouring the solution into an evaporating basin. And then we're going to have to heat that to get the water out. I could heat it directly over a Bunsen burner, but unfortunately the copper sulphate crystals do have a tendency to start to break down if you heat them too much and they release nasty, nasty gases um, and would have to evacuate the lab and I don't want to do that. So instead I'm going to heat them more gently over a beaker of boiling water. So I place my evaporating basin on here and then my Bunsen burner goes underneath and this is just a slightly gentle way of heating it and as the water boils the steam will heat the bottom of the evaporating basin and the water from the crystals will evaporate. 
So we've been heating now for about 10 minutes or so over the steam bath and all the water has evaporated out of our copper sulphate. And so here we can now see that we've got a good yield of copper sulphate crystals. And so the final thing I need to do is I just need to scrape those out of the evaporating dish onto a piece of paper and there we have it. A lovely sample of pure dry copper sulphate crystals.